Hi, welcome to Kraku. In this video, I'll be explaining arithmetic progression and its formulas and some basic questions after that. Just to help you get a basic grip on arithmetic progression as it's one of the most important concepts in the CAT exam in the quant section. So let's get started. Okay, so arithmetic progression is nothing but a series of number where the difference between two consecutive terms are equal. So the difference between the first term and the second term is equal to the difference between the third and the fourth term or the fourth and the fifth term. So we generally represent an arithmetic progression in the following way. So a if a is the first term, a plus d will be the second term, a plus 2d will be the third term and so on. So this makes for a lot of interesting questions that usually come in the CAT exam. Let's look at the properties and some formulas. So usually the nth term of an arithmetic progression is represented as t of n which is written as a plus n minus 1 d. So this is the nth term of an arithmetic progression. As you can see the common difference between the nth term and the n plus 1th term is d which is the common difference and we have taken a as the first term of the arithmetic progression. Now let's look at the sum of an arithmetic progression. The sum of an arithmetic progression is given as n plus 2 uh, into 2a plus n minus 1d. Now you might be wondering that this is a complicated formula but actually if you break it down it's nothing but number of terms in an arithmetic progression divided by 2 into the first term plus the last term. And if we uh, expand it using the notations that we learned earlier, it would be n by 2 into a plus a plus n minus 1 d. Now, this is nothing but n by 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 d. This is the formula for sum of n terms in an arithmetic progression. So this is probably two most very important formulas. These two important formulas can help you solve multiple questions. Now let's look at some of the properties of an arithmetic progression. Because two terms are uh, terms in an arithmetic progression have a common difference. We have some interesting properties that a minus k, b minus k, and c minus k will still be an arithmetic progression because at the end of the day k is a constant that we are subtracting from each term of an arithmetic progression. So if we expand it, it would be nothing but a plus, since it's the first term there is no common difference, so it's 0d minus k and then b would be a plus d minus k and then c would be a plus 2d minus k. Now you see the common difference is still the same the common difference is still d. So, a minus k, b minus k, c minus k still is an arithmetic progression. So, a common term subtracted from every term in arithmetic progression, the arithmetic progression remains with the same common difference. Now, let us look at the second property. In the second property, there is a constant k that is being multiplied with each term of an arithmetic progression. So, a into k, b into k and c into k. Right? If we expand it, it would be a into k which is the first term and b is a plus d. So, it is k into a plus d and the third term is a plus 2d. So, it is k into a plus 2d. Now, we expand it a k, a k plus d k and a k plus 2 d k. Now, the arithmetic progression is altered, the common difference is different than the original arithmetic progression, but it is still an arithmetic progression because as you can see, the first term is ak and there is an ak here, ak is here and the common difference, the new common difference is d into k. The com new common difference is dk because the first term is ak, the second term is ak plus dk, the third term is ak plus 2dk. So, it is still an arithmetic progression with a new common difference. Same goes for uh, when each term of an arithmetic progression is divided by k, right. The first term will become a by k, but the common difference will change, it will become d by k. So, it will go on for the entirety of the arithmetic progression. So, each term of an arithmetic progression divided by a constant still remains an arithmetic progression. 
this is the basic concepts of arithmetic progression and let's solve some questions to solidify this concept here we have the ratio of sums of n terms of two ap's is 8n plus 1 is to 2n plus 3 find the ratio of the eighth terms so as we have learned before let's write down the formula of sum of n terms of an ap right which is nothing but let's say uh, ap1 is equal to a is the first term and common difference is d ap2 let's take it as x and y so sum of n terms since both are n terms we'll write it as n by 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 d by n by 2 2x plus n minus 1 y this is equal to what is given there the ratio 8n plus 1 by 2n plus 3 and what we need to find out is the eighth term of the arithmetic progression which is uh, a plus 7d divided by x plus 7y this is using the nth term of the arithmetic progression formula right so um, expanding this actually uh, clearing some of it we get uh, 2a plus n minus 1 d divided by 2x plus n minus 1 y now this is still equal to 8n plus 1 divided by 2n plus 3 now we can see that this is the required fraction that we need so we can see that by substituting n is equal to 15 in this fraction we'll get 2a plus 15 minus 1 is 14 so we'll get 2a plus 14d divided by 2x plus 14y now you can take two common and we will get a plus 7d divided by x plus 7y which is the required fraction so let's so by substituting n is equal to 15 here we will get a plus 7d divided by x plus 7y so since we have substituted n is equal to 15 we will substitute n is equal to 15 in the ratio that was given to us by substituting n is equal to 15 we get our desired fraction on the left hand side so we will substitute n is equal to 15 in the ratio that was given to us so uh, 15 substituted in 8n plus 1 divided by 2n plus 3 which will give us 121 divided by 33 now taking 11 common we will get 11 by 3 which is the answer so the answer for this question is c we'll go to the next question if the sum of 17 terms of an arithmetic progression is equal to sum of the first 23 terms of the progression what is the sum of the first 40 terms of the progression now this is simply using the sum of n terms formula that we learned now let's write all the information that's given to us and what we want to find out so sum of the first 17 terms so that is 17 by 2 into 2a plus 16 d is equal to since it's given to the it's equal to the first 23 terms 23 by 2 into 2a plus 22 d now uh, and what we need is the sum of the first 40 terms so which is nothing but 40 by 2 into 2a plus 39 so this is what we want and we have to find this is the information that's given to us so by simplifying this we'll get 34a plus 17 602 and we'll get 272d is equal to 46a and we'll get 506d and now further simplifying it we will get uh, 12a is equal to 234d right well 12a is equal to minus 234d and now by dividing either side by 6 we will get 2a is equal to minus 39d so taking minus 39 on the other side we will get 2a plus 39d is equal to 0 
Now, substituting in this in the uh, sum of 40 terms formula that we did in the start, we will, it's 40 by 2 into 0. So, the answer is 0. Let us move on to the next question. Some of the first three numbers of an increasing arithmetic progression. So, increasing arithmetic progression means d is greater than 0, is 60. While the sum of the squares of the first three numbers in the arithmetic progression is 1, 2, 5, 0. What is the fifth term of an AP? So, when questions like this is given where sum of first three terms or first five terms, for calculation purposes, to make the calculation easier, we take the terms as A minus D, A and A plus D. It is still the same, the common difference of an AP is still D, right? it is still an arithmetic progression, just that this is the first term, this is the second term, this is the third term. And similarly, when you take it for five terms, it is same, uh, A minus 2D, A minus D, A, A plus D and A plus 2D. So, this is just for calculation purposes, just to make it easier. So, the sum of the first three increasing uh, arithmetic progression is 60. So, sum of these three terms is 60. So, it is A minus D plus A plus A plus D. So, D gets cancelled. So, we get 3A is equal to 60 and A is equal to 20. So, we know the second term or the A term in the formula that we just did. And now we now we have to find out the sum of the squares of the first three numbers. So squaring them, we get a square plus b square minus 2ad plus a square plus a square plus d square plus 2ad. And then simplifying this, cancelling 2ad, we get 3a square plus 2d square is equal to 1 to 5 0. A is equal to 40, so A square is equal to 400, so 3 into 400 is equal to 1200, 1200 plus 2 D square is equal to 1250 and so 2 D square is equal to 50 and D square is equal to 25. Since it is an increase, since we have given that D is greater than 0, D is equal to 5. So, we know A is what A value is, we know what D value is and since I told you the first term of the AP right now is A minus D. So, the first term will be 15 because 20 minus 5 is 15 and we need to find the fifth term of the AP. So, 15 plus 5 minus 1 into 5. So, that 15 plus 20 which is equal to 35. C answer is C. Let's move on to the next question. The arithmetic progression of n, where n is greater than 25, has only integers in it. The average of the first four terms is 14, and the average of the last four terms is 90. What is the common difference? So now we have been given a very strict condition that n is greater than 25. So we have to keep that in mind. Now let's go on starting solving the question like the previous ones. The average of the first four terms is 14. So, we will write the four terms as A plus A plus D as the second term, A plus 2D and A plus 3D. This average should be equal to 14. So, simplifying this, we will get A plus 3d plus 2d is equal to 5d plus d is equal to 6d. 6 divided by 4 is 1.5. So, a plus 1.5d is equal to 14. So, let us box that up. Now, let us tackle the second part which says the average of the last four terms. So, the last term of an AP is a plus n minus 1d. The second last term is a plus n minus 2d. Third term is a plus n minus 3d and the fourth term is a plus n minus 4d. So, the average of this is equal to 90. So, this will not be nothing but 4a plus it will be 4nd minus uh, 4, uh, 4 plus 3 is equal to 7, 7 plus 2 is equal to 9, 9 plus 1 is equal to 10. So, minus 10d, this divided by 4 is equal to 90. So, further simplifying this, we will get a plus n d minus 2.5 d is equal to 90. Now, let us box this up. 
Let's see, call this equation 1 and we'll call this equation 2. Subtracting the second equation from the first equation, we will get uh, nd minus 4d is equal to 76. And taking d common, we will get nd into n minus 4 is equal to 76. Now, we have been given that n is greater than 25. Now, let's look at the factors of 76. So, 76 has 76 itself as a factor, 38, 19, uh, 2 and you have 1. Now, we have been told that n is greater than 25. So, this value has at minimum should be 21. Right, now, let's look at the factor. So, n minus 4 can possibly be two different values. n minus 4 can be 76 or n minus 4 can be 38. Now, let's go from the first. So, n minus 4 can be 76. So, let's take that as the first case. So, if n minus 4 is 76, n is equal to 80 and d is equal to 1. And, and since we have been told that these, this particular arithmetic progression has integers only, by solving for a here, we will get a is equal to 14 minus 1.5, which is 12.5, which is not true because we have been given that uh, it's only integers. So, let's look at the second case where n minus 4 is equal to 38. So, if n minus 4 is equal to 38, n is equal to 42. So, we'll take n minus 4 is equal to 38, the second case. So, if n minus 2 is equal to 38, n is equal to 42. So, and since n minus 4 is equal to 38, d will be equal to 2. And now solving for a, uh, a will be equal to 14 minus 1.5 into 2, for 1.5 into 2 is equal to 3. So, a will be equal to 11. A will be equal to 11, that's an integer. And since the common difference also is an integer, all the terms in the arithmetic progression will remain integers. So, we need to find what is the common difference, which is equal to 2, d is equal to 2. The answer is b.